Laris is super terbo maquila volat. Lika Polaris is super terbo maquila volat. He's, he said you'd trodden his foot in the queue, and he's very upset about it. I've got an aunt who comes from Paisley. I'll see you tomorrow. Break the back gates, you be there. He wants to meet you, tomorrow break time, outside the gates. What? He wants to fight me? Are you kidding? Perhaps you take three your big wussy. <laughs> he says maybe... Yes, thank you, Jeff. I got that bit. You be there. Does anyone know who that was? Robert McCluskey. Yes. Well, how's he settling in? Finding his feet? Making friends? Hardly. Oh. What's the... what's the problem? He keeps picking fights with people. Fights? This seems to be the only thing he really enjoys. Bob, please. We all know he has a few behavioural difficulties, but that's what we're paid to sort out, isn't it? What we need to do is to, um... to, uh... What we, um... Have you got any ideas what we could do? Well, the last time we had someone like this, the dinner lady put tranquilizers in his mashed potatoes. Mm. I don't think we'll get away with that twice. Look, I'll, um, I'll talk to him and I'll have a word with his grandparents. But in the meantime, I will not tolerate fighting. I want you to make it clear that if I hear of anyone fighting with him, anyone at all, they'll find themselves in very serious trouble. I don't believe it. Who did you say he was? Mr. Travis from over the road. Oh, but he can't just... I mean, doesn't he ask? Well, he did the first time. He came out to borrow a hammer. I told him to help himself. And he's been doing it ever since? Exactly. Well, you've got to do something, Pam. Well, I what? You can tell him to get his nose out of your shed for a start. Come on. Come on. Travis, I... Hang on, hold your horses! Ah, got it. It's one hell of a mess in there. I don't know how you expect anyone to find anything. Mr. Travis, I... Well, I'm glad you came out. I've got something to show you. I was using this yesterday, and the motor burned out after five minutes. You want to take that back to where you bought it and complain. Thought like that could be very dangerous. Donald. Donald Travis. Hi, uh, how'd you do? Well, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to my garden. Not all of us can sit round here drinking coffee all afternoon, eh? <laughs> Fight him. You don't want to not fight him. What else is there to do? I don't know. And that's why we need some advice. It's a tricky one, isn't it? It's like I only had two choices, and neither of them's any good. If he does fight Bobby, he gets into trouble with Mr. Wharton. And if I don't, everyone says he's a wuss. Yes. Not easy. You see, the thing is, Mrs. Manley, what he doesn't know is that we could. Well, we could do anything to him. A quilly could kill him from three miles away without a sound. We've got the laser, the wave gun, and we could put him in another dimension. It's like the Americans in Vietnam, isn't it? What? They found that being larger and more powerful than your opponents doesn't necessarily solve the problem. Well, what happened to them? They lost the war. They were defeated, driven out of the country. It took them 20 years to recover. Great. Well, I don't know if it helps. But Chief Running Water says that if you think about it, there is another choice. Really? What is it? I'm afraid that's all he said. He can be very enigmatic at times. The 
you tomorrow. Thanks. Is uh, everything all right? Yeah, fine. You're sure? Yeah, why? Thought you might be worrying about something. Like this fight you're supposed to be having at break tomorrow. Mrs Murray rang half an hour ago. She wanted to know if you'd worked out what you were going to do. Well, I haven't. Look, I can phone the headmaster and ask him... No, no, it's OK, really. Can I tell you something, Tom? As you go through life, there are lots of people and plenty of things that will wind you up. Mr Travis taking things from the shed without asking makes me angry. It makes me very angry. In fact, it makes me so angry that I... But you have to remember that in the long run, violence doesn't really solve anything. If you think about it, there's usually a better choice. That's what the Chief said. What? Oh, nothing. You think about it. Not for too long now. And now I realise it's not just two choices. There's a third. Right. And what's that? If I turn up and fight him, there's trouble. If I don't turn up and fight him, there's still trouble. But if I turn up and he doesn't, you don't have to fight him and that really says you're all works. You got it. Just one of the problem, really. Why doesn't Bobby turn up? The wave gun. That's the one that kills any life from within a radius of three miles, isn't it? Not necessarily. Can we see the parameters for the core defence wave gun, please? You see? You can set it for whatever you like. You can choose the distance, you can choose what life forms you want to die, or you can render them unconscious for any specified length of time up to seven days. You know, I've always wanted to try that one. Mr. Walter would like to see Robert McCluskey, sir. No. Yes, sir. OK, Robert, off you go. Oh, Bobby. If you can get there and back without a fight. 50p, all right? No, I have to get to the office. You think I'm stupid? No, no, I was just... You think I'm too afraid to find my own way? I didn't say that, I was only asking. You're looking for a fight, you're going the right way about it. I'll see you later. OK, <laughs> let's get it. Be too late. I'll be able to say I waited for him and he never turned up. Well, supposing he tells everyone. What? <laughs> supposing he tells everyone he was knocked unconscious and woke up in the cupboard. I think they'll believe that. Nah. The record was, what's the matter? Is he alive? I think so. He's still breathing. Oh, you better get a teacher. I'll put... Get a teacher, Tom. He could be dying. What are you doing? I think you should come see this. Oh, for goodness sake, we haven't got time to... I really to... think you should see this. Oh, 
This, are you? I mean, we don't want to frighten them unnecessarily. All right, all right, you're in charge. It's an answering machine. Hello? My name is Grace Murray, and I left a message just after nine o'clock for Tom Baxter and Jeff Reynolds, and I wonder if you could pass on another one for me. It's rather urgent. It's about a fire. Maybe it was a very boring lesson. You know Mrs. Barry. <laughs> you think it was us? Who else could it have been? It can't be. We set it for three meters. How can it reach this far? Centimeters. What? We set it for 300 centimetres. It's the same thing, Tom. 300 centimetres is 3 metres. 300 cm's, it said. And a cm is a centimetre, isn't it? Isn't it? The Collingwood, abbreviation CM. A uranium measurement based on the length of an adolescent pheasant's brachial extension. In human terms, a cm is 0.637 of a metre. So how many people have been knocked out? Well, it looks like the playing fields, anyone in the back gardens along Palmerston Road, and the school. The school? The entire school? I suppose it could have been worse. How? You have 200 unconscious bodies in there, Jeff. How could it be worse? Well, they're going to come round, aren't they? In about 10 minutes. We just have to wait. As long as the school doesn't catch fire or anything, they'll be fine. What did you say? I said as long as the school doesn't catch fire or anything, they'll... <laughs> Times like this, you really wish you had a man, isn't it? What? To sort out Mr. Travis. <laughs> oh, that. It's solved most of my problems, really. A man. What I need, Sally, is for someone rich, good-looking, and unmarried to walk into my life and sit himself down beside me. I'm afraid that's not how it happens in the real world, is it, Pam? No. No, I know. <laughs> the rest of the building. Right. I'll go upstairs, you do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, if Bobby ever wants to fight you again, I think it'd be a lot less trouble if you just stump him. What sort of man? Yes, I mean, do you want someone tall, dark, fair, lean? I wouldn't care what he looks like, Sal. No. Or what he does, really. I'd like someone strong, you know. Mm. Strong, but at the same time, gentle. They have to be gentle. Have you actually met any men recently, Pam? I mean, real ones. My bag! He's taken my bag! No! Don't go, man! He's taken my bag! Is that short? Did you see that? Yes. Yes, I did. How's it going? Oh, not too bad. Nobody dead anyway. How about you? Well, there's a boy in the toilets that's going to be very embarrassed when he wakes up. But apart from that, nothing. Is that Oliver Burfield? I think he fell on her. You know, they might just get away with this one, Tom. One or two bruises when people wake up, but apart from that, everything's the same. Until people notice they can't remember the last 15 minutes. Ah, and I've been wondering about that. I thought maybe we could do something to the clocks. The clocks? I remember seeing Mr. Water do it when we had a power cut last time. All the clocks are wrong, you see, but you don't have to change them individually. If you put this one right, all the others do the same. Great. 
I'll put it back 15 minutes. That gives us four minutes before they all come round. And when they wake up... There's a telephone message for us here. For us? From Mrs. Murray. I have a warning from the Chief. Danger, bodies, hundreds of bodies. Please take care. <sighs> Bit late now. He got this at five past nine. Well, why didn't he give it to us then? I mean, doesn't that sound like an urgent message to you? We don't have to worry, Tom. When everyone wakes up, it'll be exactly the same time as when they passed out. They'll never know. We've knocked out an entire school, and nobody's ever going to know. How are we going to find the headmaster's office? Don't worry, love. I'm sure we'll find someone to ask. Are you the lady whose bag was stolen? That's right, yes. He just took it and ran off. He would have got away with it too if this gentleman hadn't stopped him. So I heard. Nice one. He caught him by the arm, flung him straight up in the air and threw him on the ground, went straight down on top of him and pinned him there so he couldn't move. It was wonderful. Well, if I could just take your name, sir. Uh, Richard. Alan Richard. And your address? Uh, 17. Leighton Gardens. Would you like my address? I think my colleague has already... Oh, sorry. Yes. Yes, I would. I'd like that very much. If we take him back out to Aquila, we can sack him again so he'll be out for a bit longer. And then we can bring him back to... Excuse me. We're looking for Mr. Walton's office. Yeah, master. We were wondering if you could show us the way. Yes, of course. Thank you. I must say, it's wonderfully quiet here, isn't it? Sorry? A lot of schools you go in, it's all noise. Shouting, people running around. Sounds like everyone's knuckling down to a heel. Yeah. What are they doing in there? Ah, that's religious studies. They're learning meditation to cope with stress. Oh, our Bobby could do with some of that, Immortal. <laughs> yes, he's certainly good. <laughs> Bobby? Bobby McCluskey, our grandson, has started here. Have you met him? No, I, uh, have you? No, 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 definitely not. I'll show you where Mr. Walton's office is. Tom's got something to move rather urgently. Haven't you, Tom? <laughs> Mr. Walton might be available for another 90 seconds. Don't you worry about us. You get along back to your list. If you see our Bobby and say hello, he could do with a friend like you. You can't miss him. He's very small. Well, the first thing he'll probably do is try and fight you. But you don't want to take any notice of that. No. He only does it because at the moment, well, I'm sure you've got better things to do than to listen to his problems. No. No, please, at the moment what? His parents are getting divorced. It's not very pleasant. That's why he's staying with us. I don't know if you've been through anything like that yourself, but uh, it's not an easy time. He gets angry and he doesn't know how to express it. People would only be patient. Let him work it through. That's what we've come to tell you, Mr. Walton, will you? We're hoping he'll understand. We're hoping everyone will. <laughs> Mrs. Liddy, I'm so glad you could, um...
Oh, hi, Bobby. I thought we should talk. I've no time to talk to you. I'm seeing Mr. Walton. No, you're not. What? Mr. Walton doesn't want to see you. It's just an excuse we made to get you out of the classroom. Right, too obvious, is it? I'm ready. Look, Bobby, can we just forget about fighting for two seconds and talk? John? Jeff? Did you get my messages? Yeah. Yeah, we did, thanks. And was it all right about the bodies and the fire? The bodies were fine, Mrs. Murray. No problem. And it was only a very small fire. Oh, I'm so glad. I'll tell the chief. I nearly forgot. What happened about the fight? There wasn't one. No? We, uh, found another choice. Oh, that is good. I knew you would. So what was it? What? The other choice. What did you do? Well, we saw Bobby, and I said I was very sorry if I had tried another time. And I promised not to do it again. What did he say? Oh. He said he wanted to beat me up anyway. I said that was a bit unfair, as Tom had apologised. So then he wanted to beat up Jeff as well. But I apologised too, and eventually he decided to let us off. He sounds a rather aggressive sort of a boy. Yeah, he is quite. But that wasn't a new choice, was it? I thought you said yesterday that if you didn't fight him, people would say you were scared. Yeah, they did. But didn't you mind? Well, I suddenly thought that's a bit I can choose about, isn't it? If I decide what I want to do, I can't choose what everyone else will think about it, but I can choose whether it matters or not. And I decided it didn't. Well done, Tom. Well done. Excuse me a minute. I think that's a remarkably adult decision, Tom. And you're quite right. Hitting people isn't the solution to anything. <laughs> However, I will come to realise, as you grow older, that there are some exceptions to the rule. Are you Mr. Travis?